Ja. I accept your two normal deductions. Okay. All right. Um, under number, well, I changed everything from shall to will. Mm -hmm. And under retirement, the Worcester County Retirement System is available to employees scheduled to work 20 hours per week or more throughout the year. The plan, including eligibility, is described separately in the system booklet. Continued employment beyond the normal retirement age shall, will, be contingent upon employees' ability to satisfactorily perform the duties of the position. My question was, does this require a medical exam? I mean, if somebody wants to continue working, I mean, I changed, because I just went through the documents that anything that says shall will say will, mm -hmm. and then, you know, right. to reread them. But what does that mean this exactly? This means, well, it means a lawsuit. It means we would be discriminating against someone because of age. So okay. I don't think so we can mandatorily require someone to retire. Right. Can we? No. Uh, we can't. So, so does this whole paragraph even will be contingent upon the employee's ability to satisfactorily perform? I mean, should that even be in there? No. Right? No. I mean, I we need to okay, take that so out. Okay, so take that out. That's a lawsuit. So, uh, so does the whole, all of number five can go? Or just some of the words? <laughs> well, no, you want to pe let people to know that they are part of Worcester County Retirement System and they should get their booklet. Yeah. Okay, so continue to need a point. It's a blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Take that out. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I was just moving on to six. And Go ahead. If I'm jumping the gun. I think for the same <clears throat> reasoning that I brought up earlier, I there are two separate issues. One is whether someone's going to be entitled to um, unemployment, and the other being whether or not you can dismiss them. Here we're just talking about whether or not we can dismiss them. I, I mean, if we need to dismiss an employee, I don't know if we need to say that remedial disciplinary measures have to be implemented. Um, we have to give them time for it to improve. Um, and I know that we do say certain offenses may occur which are you know, serious enough to require immediate dismissal, but then we start to get into the issue of what's serious enough to require immediate dismissal and what isn't. I don't know if we just want to just say that, just repeat what we already did say in L, that, that um, all employees except contract employees, uh, all separations of employees, what am I looking at here? You're, you're looking under termination? Right, to just use that same language. Oh, the, and the town just used the language, the town reserves the right to terminate employment for any reason permissible by law. Okay, so repeat L. Yep. So repeat L. Also, the right. dismissal yep. process yep. is a mirror of the hiring process. It's department head recommends to Administrator who then gets confirmation of that by the board of selectmen. So, so that the pro so in head, addition to repeating L, you want it to be the employee is, is not state. in accordance with the, new the process. Okay. I'll, yep. So no more remedial discipline. Which I mean, obviously. Yeah. yeah, I'll fix that. Everyone is free to implement if they town administrator. Right. Letting someone go for a particular reason. Okay. You have to pay them what. Vacation is an example, but you can end up turning around and denying them. I mean, you don't even talk about that here. Because of the offense. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's a whole separate That's, that's a, a whole separate, 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 separate issue. Here we're just talking about yeah, whether or not we can fire someone. You can fire someone for any reason as long as it isn't race, religion, you know, any of yep. the. But having this check and balance of so, uh, department head recommending to the administrator who then gets cut from it is good because right. it, it provides a process where there'd be less likelihood of, of making a stupid mistake that results in a lawsuit that you lose. And we've talked about that, you and I. Uh, yep. Right. <clears throat> um, uh, the next section is exit interview. Um, I think my questions were, uh, does an exit interview actually happen? If not, why not? Where are the records stored? And I asked about some few specific uh, people in here, um, only because they're recent. Um, and then the, the section in general, was it okay, not okay? Um, I, I don't think that question ended up in here, but it should have. You know, does it make sense with some of the other things that we are stating, a process? Um, you know, we're not saying something that we shouldn't be. You know, are those, you know, it says, um, will be interviewed at an exit interview as near as possible to the close of the last day of work prior to the issuance of an employee's final paycheck. I mean, did that happen? Should we even be doing it based on that? I mean, I, I, I don't agree with that, but 
but to actually actually have one, I think we should have one. I think that we, you know, it's in the customary course of uh, business that, you know, why are you going? What could we do different? What I mean, there's a lot of good questions that you can ask um, for that, but it, you know, doing it prior to sometimes someone's a final paycheck may not always be um, a, a, the ability to have that be done. So I. Like I that think it's a really good idea for an employee who is uh, moving on to another job. Yeah. Uh, because it's important for the administrator and who can then report to the board of selectmen that we've lost a good employee or we've lost an employee for this reason. That it's important to keep that knowledge uh, within the management level people. Uh, exit interviews for someone who is being dismissed, I think, are pretty hard. Yeah, I don't think I quite that. I mean, do we have to be like this? You can't move you, so So my thing was, too, is, you know, in looking at it again, is do we really need to have all this language in here, you know, to identify problems or determine trends? Do we really want to say all that? Do we have to? Can't we just say, are we going to do an exit interview? Yeah. And, you know, why do we have to go into such, you know, do we keep I, a record of it? I mean, I think it's just more, very, uh, what do you think? I don't want to open us up to anything no. else either. The questions yeah. seem kind of not, we, they, we should ask them, but do we really need to have all the policy? No, I think shorter yeah. is better. Okay. So and let me, I really think we need to focus more on the probationary period. Oh, yeah. That should, we, yes, we, we should. We need to focus on. Yeah. But to just even have, you know, like I said, not making it to, subject to a final paycheck, and but right. just saying that we would do one. Okay, um, and the eight unemployment, and then disciplinary policy. Um, I read it. Uh, I changed <laughs> shall to will, um, and in like the disciplinary probation, uh, is this with or without pay? Um, suspension. What would be some of the reasons a suspension would happen, and should we even be writing those things down in here? I think when I read this, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> is this yeah. too much? Is it too much wording? Is it, you know, do we, I, I don't know. So that's really, did anybody else have any thoughts on that? I think we should look at other yep. disciplinary policies, because I don't think this is a good one. Yeah. Okay, so more detail, more. It looks um, like it was based on like a union contract. Okay. Um, and this isn't a union contract. Okay. Is there a discipline? Is there such a, no. I, I tried to do some referencing um, to that and I didn't really find too much, but I think I just kind of, knowing that we would just sit down and talk about it would be, you know, it would bring up like, oh, let's look at that again and kind of skip over that for the moment. Um, right, so Amber's on to question. But to look at it in more detail. Uh, the green. Uh, discipline uh, policies per se, as the, the steps taken, is it, it usually a separate one that's handed to the employees when they're hired? Uh, I think it can be part of this. Yeah. Because so they should separate, understand that if they do get into something, well, then we would have to give them a separate termination policy. We would have to, I think, as long as it's all encompassed. But I think some of the words that are in here, it's too much. Um, less is more, yeah. um, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Less is more. <coughs> the grievance procedure, um, I didn't really, again, uh, change too much. I, I did read it. Um, for more, like, when we talked about the process, does this process make sense? Is, you know, again, less is more, but I think this is a little bit, I didn't know if there was some place else I could go to look and see if there was another procedure somewhere, is there some law, is there, you know, but definitely the procedure, I think this needs to be um, very well written out too, even if less is more, you know, the process of that. Before we get into that, I just wanted to mention something about the oral reprimand, stage one and progressive discipline uh, policy. Yep. In many instances, uh, discipline is challenged successfully because there's no proof of an oral reprimand that the uh, department okay. head forgets yep. to note an oral reprimand in the file. And so when this all gets completed, yep. we need to, I think we need to convene the department heads for 
a review of okay. this process, certainly to make sure that they note for any oral reprimands in the file. Because if they go direct, if they go to uh, the written uh, uh, reprimand and say, "Well, this is I told you about the, this problem earlier," and is, if there's no evidence of that, then you lose. If is there? Challenged. Is there? Do you have to do um, a verbal one? To, to, to Normally, it's a progressive yeah, you know, sorry. Yeah. Can you Actually, just Actually, you document it with something that goes in the jacket. So, well, like, you might as well write it. Uh, and right. you actually have them initial signed. Right. Well, that'll be in writing. But I'm yeah. saying, do you, do you have to even have? I'll do some more research on yeah. that. Because yeah. if you don't even have to do a verbal one, and that's gonna just just write it down, and you know that'll probably be better. You know, I mean that's what we do in school for kids, for discipline. Uh, Everything mm -hmm. has to be written and right, right. down. Mm -hmm. Everything. So It makes more sense, right. doesn't it? You, they, the administrators <coughs> need that paper trail. Right. So we should probably. OK. It's also better for the employee to have yeah. something right. Yep. This is what One would did. think, right? Because it, so it is a, it a, is a, a oral and business is actually written. Mm -hmm. so, right, but uh, yeah, we are written like rather and like maybe not even have that word. Um, the grievance will look at the actual um, steps and does that, you know, make sense? Um, and, yep. Oh, I, I didn't know if you were getting to OEN. Yeah. Element. Oh, you know what? I did not really do too much with that. I mean, there, there has to be some, there has to be some kind of law, but I didn't know where to go for the anti-harassment policy. Oh, is there some place that I can kind of just well, cut in the haze I, it, it's, I mean, even the first sentence like makes me giggle inside because the town of Templeton is committed to maintaining a work environment free of harassment based on race, color, religion. But you can harass people for any other reason that you want to, but we just we just don't harass them for those reasons. I think it may be better to just say the town of Templeton is committed to maintaining a work environment free of harassment. Period. Thing. For whatever reason. Yep. <laughs> just no harassment. I um, mean, then kind yeah, of we don't like people who went to Disney. Right, exactly, exactly. So if you're oh, harassing because sure. I went on vacation, you can, you know, we, I want to be protected from that as well. Um, but the same thing, harassment of individuals on the basis of just harassment of individuals will not be tolerated, I think is, is sufficient. Okay. Um, and I do, I notice this is something that happens throughout the policy, and I, I mean, I understand that we want our employees to be aware of what they're not supposed to do, but I think that we also need to be careful when <laughs> stating the law. Um, and we don't want, I mean, we're not playing the role of their attorneys. So when we define for them what sexual harassment is, they're going to say, well, you told me sexual harassment was A, B, and C. I did D. You didn't tell me it was that. So, I, you know, so. It plant seeds. We right, right. Be it, you know, it, it does. That, you know, that, that, so just to, again, to make it less is more. Right. And don't, okay, so I'll just to use general, right, more general language. I mean, I don't know okay. if, if we want to still say what sexual harassment is. I mean, I, no. Just don't harass you know, what, what's the legal definition of pornography? Right, right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, so fine. You know it when you see it. Welcome to right. right. And, and, uh, but the state statute has two parts. It's both harassment yeah. and the other is creating a hostile environment. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. So, so we may have to put in a whole variety of things Stay other than discrimination and right. harassment. Right. 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 So we may just yeah. want to say that, you know, sexual harassment is defined, is more, you know, completely defined by Mass General Law Chapter. And then if they right. would, if an employee would like to go look that up or take it to their right. attorney right. to see what they're allowed to do and what they need to do, but that may be. Has anybody looked at them? State uh, MCAD EEOC, don't they put things out with kind of what things are? And yeah, yeah, what, they, what the legal definition of these things Oh, right, right. And we may want to refer yeah. people just to that, so then if it changes, because if the definition, you know, there's a court case in it, the definition okay, so changes, <laughs> two months later we may be providing incorrect information. Yeah. So if we. All say right, so I put defined by what that's applicable. Or maybe uh, obtained from the EEO. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Okay, let me, okay, I'll fix that. Um, complaint procedure, I wasn't, it, um, again, I didn't do too much uh, with that, just changed to, um, 
administrator and will, and there must be, there has to be some place I can look up to make sure those are correct too. So, I mean, where I've, I'll just put um, notes to myself. Um, drug free and alcohol workplace policy. I didn't know where this came from, and yep. did I skip something? No. I didn't know. Just it's a, there's not like really sexual conduct and working conditions. So, well, I mean, there is an there is an issue involving drug and alcohol, but it's in Appendix A because we have a separate substance yep. abuse policy. So I don't know if you just want to refer or just put it over to the Appendix A. Or so you just want to move the whole thing into here? Or don't just get rid of P altogether. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> it doesn't matter to me, I'm just gonna either take it out or okay. uh, we, we can take it out. Because we have a separate okay. town of Templeton substance abuse policy. Okay, fine. So that would change P to okay. Um let's see. Yeah, moving right along here. I, um, let me see, standards of con town employees will avoid any action that might create the impression of using public office for private gain, giving preferential treatment to any person, or losing impartiality in conducting themselves, okay, attendance, regular attendance during all scheduled hours of work, reporting to work on time, and continuing to work at the end of the week period is expected of every employee on each scheduled work day. Where did all this come from? Really, this should have been my question at the top, like, a lot it's wordy it's um it's yeah some of it's like really um uh, smoking so political activity wage yeah, garnishments i mean okay yes sir i didn't know what to do with all this to be honest with you <laughs> it found me but um conflict of interest we have a uh form that we um yeah, sign we so this is state law Right, so I mean, is some of this, is all of this actually necessary to have here or not? We may want to still keep it just so that somebody can't so say, oh, I didn't realize con conflicts of interest were an issue. But okay, again, but maybe not know, so that. much wording. I mean, I don't know. I, I'd like to dig a little bit deeper. I don't really want to do time into some of these. Yeah. In the smoking, for instance? I think it ought to stay in there, and I think it's the obligation of your town administrator to talk to department heads periodically about standards like this okay and to say to them it's your really obligation the wording in here though to keep your employees informed about some of these uh, matters where they can get themselves into trouble and section E is just kind of like a little soapbox. I mean, it may yeah, be true. Yeah, it just seems that way. I'm, I'm like, so okay, really? Identified as the single most important determinant <laughs> of an individual's health. I, mean, I don't know if that's you true. Know, if we're going to do that, I'm going to put something. I want something in there about fluoride. And right. Okay, okay, then. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Right. Okay, so I just want to look again at like some different wording, or maybe we can just have some bullet points well, and not and this again appendix b covers the salt or cholesterol right, right. Exactly. or sugar uh, okay sugar. Sugar. because appendix b is like appendix a covers drugs appendix b is the smoking policy which is awfully lengthy but yeah i didn't know what to do so i don't know if it's even sorry. Need smoking okay so we, we do need to have a smoking oh, oh no i know we, we do, do but it's, it's, it's back, back to the here that's why yeah. it's back here i see your board of health stated there's no smoking. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, they, they have precedence over that when they come up. Let me let me just we should maybe talk to them. Yeah. Okay. So let me just I'll look at that again. <clears throat> when I'm when I'm making all my changes. I will okay. it's easy not easy. I, I've read this a couple of times, but then being able to talk about it um, together makes it easier to go, oh, well, now that we talked about this, that part doesn't make sense. And, you know, so I'll, I'll look at that again. Um, even, oh, just going even to after wage garnishments, I, I think yeah, that first two little sentences little are not necessary yep. either. Garnishment action. Federal law also permits the preferential attachment of wages by the. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean that's true, <clears throat> but, but I don't know if it needs to be. We need to kind of be. Conduct and working conditions. Wage garnishment. That doesn't make sense in there at all. 
That's correct, because it right, does that, that doesn't even make sense. Because it does kind of imply that the wage garnishment is part of your, yeah, is a little bit, oh, because you have your wage garnished, I, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you were smoking. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anytime, yeah, okay, anyway. we're not even going to go there. <laughs> um, and then, like I said, well, at the end, I was like, well, should the treasurer, accountant, or town administrator be responsible for the wage gap? It just didn't. Anyway, there's my question for that. Uniforms um, and special clothing, short shorts and t-shirts are not to be worn by office personnel. I get that. Do we, I mean, I, if we, I, if we, I, I that that we need a dress code. Right, so you this doesn't even make code? sense in here. It's hard. Yeah. It doesn't. I know that, Bobby, I said this before, and you <laughs> said that you got like certain things that I'm like, okay, so can we, we spell out two things. Could, could you say that all employees are to be dressed professionally? Business casual, I something? Like as shall be, okay, so yeah, as shall, word be, as yeah. shall be determined by the personnel authority. Or well, my feeling is so-called business casual ought to be the standard. Yeah. And it's not business. just aesthetics. It's showing respect. Uh, for the town, town residents when they come in that you are acceptably dressed. Yeah, I just don't, that sentence is it, It's weird. a matter of personal pride as well. Uh, people, you know, if, if it's jeans, t-shirt, and tennis shoes 24-7, somehow that doesn't, that doesn't really present the kind of uh, image to the public, but I think they have a right to expect when they come into a town office. So I don't know how you define a dress code, but clearly, I don't know. It was anything, that goes, was just anything <laughs> goes is not the right approach. Okay. Um, all right. I'll I'll fix that. Um, yeah, and I don't know why it has uniforms. I don't know either. Uh, how about if I just fix the whole pair? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, I know, but this, right, while well, the highway wears, like, right. there's right. special, right, but I'll fix the pair. Oh, sure. It'd probably be easier. Um, safety on the job, just the policy of the town of Templeton that every employee is entitled to work under the safest possible conditions. Is there, like, just something? Can we get rid of that? It's, again, it's just me. Well, it's there's OSHA rules. Is there not? I mean, why are we having to spell this out? Is there a better way to do this? Well, I think, well, I, I can understand addressing it, but, like, for instance, accidents which injure people, damage uh, your yeah. equipment, and destroy materials, cause needless suffering, inconvenience, and expense. <laughs> I'm not prepared to say that. Like, I, like, I get saying that it's supposed to say employees deserve a safe workplace, but we don't have to tell them why. You can really do this much longer. Why it's right. I mean, why? So it's just like somebody was writing a dissertation. I don't know. <laughs> I did, apparently, I Okay, I'll fix that too. <laughs> the next sentence is good. It's, I mean, we should have that, that any incidents resulting in personal injury yeah. or property damage will be reported to the, I think that that's great, but I don't, yeah. Sentence before. Okay. Help. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all safety rules and regulations developed by the department head or appointing authority are to be considered directive in nature and applicable to all employees. Well, that's kind of a little too broad, in my opinion. Um, so uh, just, anyway, I'll fix that whole thing. Um, vehicle use policy and procedure. Um, what is happening with this now for use of personal vehicles? I really don't know. Um, the IRS requires that the town, as I mean, town vehicles. I, I'm gonna. I don't know if I should assume that this is correct. I don't know the law. Um, I don't. I'm not an accountant. Um, is a town vehicle allowed to be taken home? What are we doing about people who have to use their personal vehicles now because something is broken down? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Is this right? Is this not right? Um, who is responsible for estimating all this stuff? I mean, it's pretty lengthy, but I wasn't really sure for non-exempt employees who will do this, should a job position be named and not just the town? I had several questions in here. Should this be sent to the injury on the job? I mean, this goes, I mean, I don't know. I didn't know what to do with some of this stuff. Yeah, those questions 
You'd have to talk to your insurance company about it. Well, then what are we saying here? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I don't know if we're saying too much or, um, you know, I don't know if what we're saying is even accurate, and I don't know where to go for some of that information. I, I don't, maybe, uh, Bob, you could kind of help me out with that um, when I'm ready to get to that section, like what's correct and what's not correct. Employees, private property, the town will be responsible for providing a secure work area. Employees will be responsible for all personal property brought onto town premises. It is each employee's responsibility to secure their items, um, purses and well, I don't know. Injury on the job, is that a separate, um, if an employee is injured while working, such employee will immediately inform the department head or supervisor in writing. It is important that every injury be reported. Workers' compensation laws provide benefits for employees. I want to make sure that that's um, correct, too, like the wording that's in there. Again, sometimes less is more. Um, yeah. Again, it's another one of those assertions that, you know, work, yeah. workmen's compensation laws provide benefits for employees in well, their job. Well, that's true, but why? Well, are, yeah, they're, they're that, right. So, um, it's well administered for public safety because they have a separate insurance policy, separate rules, 111F, and all that. Okay, so it we should probably seem to be look at consistently administered right. for other departments. I mean, according to the requirements here, so that's an area that I'm not sure you need to change anything here. It just needs administration of that needs to be tightened up. Uh, yeah, illness on the job, right underneath. Say it again. Illness. Yeah, on the job. I was just. Yeah, um, you know, we'll do emergency first aid, and then you're on your own. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't even. I mean, again, it just changed to will, but I don't even know if any of that should even be um, ordered that way. I think right. that's opening us up to something. Yeah, that doesn't even. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense. I, it, <clears throat> if you need first aid, you can. Um, this this puts us in a, the exact wording is, if an employee becomes sick while at work, the department head or supervisor shall, will, arrange for emergency first aid treatment. Beyond this care, the treatment of an employee who becomes ill is the responsibility of the employee and the family physician and blah, blah, blah. Why are we saying all that? Why? Is, yeah, so can we just like maybe put illness on the job? Like we'll fix that too. It's, it's horrible. Go home, right. Or, you know, I mean, again, I think people would use reasonable measures to, if you passed out on the job, I'm pretty sure we're going to help you, but I, I would hope so. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we do we even have to put anything that says that in there. Yeah, maybe we should just go, bye. Okay, I'm going to remove it. Thank you. Um, personnel records. Uh, where are they? I think I already asked this question. I, yeah. Everything on here, I didn't know if it was Greek or not Greek. Um, uh, employee time records, each department head will submit. I didn't know what was right on here and what really wasn't right. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is good, and I think that okay, so you at look, this point, okay. um, the, the key control is for the department head to sign time sheets for all employees within the department. That's when I that when I get to this part, can we like look at that wording and just kind of make sure that the process mm -hmm. is clear, right? Um, okay. And then access to their records, um, personnel records will be considered confidential, and access will, <coughs> um, unless circumstances dictate otherwise, be limited to the board of selectmen, department heads, town administrator, personnel administrator. Um, I and I put should this be removed and treasurer, any employee upon. I, I didn't. I don't know why I put that question on there. Oh, personnel administrator. I, but I, you know, whatever the case may be, um, we probably should just keep that there, right? If we're going to have something, um, any employee department request may have access to reviewers' file. Nothing else in that seemed odd. Um, Unless written authorization is received, except to verify employment, no information concerning an employee will be released unless required by law. So, um, and then benefits. Um, uh, leave of absence. Reasonable requests for leave of absence may be granted by the department head with the approval of the Board of Selectmen. Should this be the town administrator? We need yes. to have that <laughs> process correct, okay? Um, at their discretion, such leaves of absence will fall into one of the categories. I mean, I thought they were all 
Do these all follow the right um, family and medical leave? Uh, now that I'm just, I'm just going to look that up in um, to make sure that that's all. Ooh. Yeah. We also men are allowed four weeks paternity, but women are allowed eight weeks. Well, I don't know if it meets the right law. And then well, maybe all you get. That's not legal, I can tell you. <laughs> well, okay, I'll have to look that up. So if a woman adopts a child, she's allowed to have eight weeks off of unpaid So I have to make sure that this is, a child, okay. She's only allowed to have four so weeks of unpaid It's legal. We might be able to just. Right, that's not. We might just be able to cite the exact right. um, Family Medical Leave Act, right? Um, well, then down below is the Family Medical Leave Act, and I did not look that up. So, um, so well, maybe do we even, this is kind of covered under here, so why do we even have to have um, well, then, personal, then, medical, and paternity? Do, I don't even right. know if we are going to have to have that if it's covered under the next. Well, particularly, you talk about a direct like, uh, yeah. conflict, right? Right. B2, um, right. it says that you're eligible to take. 12. Um, Up to 12. Uh, right. Uh, okay, so we should just get rid of that. Right to take care okay. of them an adopted child, but then our policy is different. Right, okay, so we'll just remove that. How about that? That will absolve that conflict. So I'll have to, we'll have to look up and make sure that that still meets the right. And do you, you know, sh should this be all spelled out in here? Can we just put that you have to see a certain um, law? Do we have to, do we right. have to, or can we just reference something or no? Do we have to spell it out? Uh, but do we have to write it all out, or do we say, I guess that's the question I'm asking, do we have to write it all out? I, I think yeah. it's probably, uh, to some extent, informative to yeah. okay. the, uh, okay. um, the town, it, I, my one question was under there is under C, 4C, the town who is responsible for this is entitled to request medical certification during family medical leave up every 30 days. Well, who's the town? Who's that person? Is that you? Is that the town administrator? Okay, so I, I wanted to be um, specific about that. Um, employees may elect to substitute six leave. Um, again, I think the process would be um, from the department head through you, through the town administrator, correct? Mm -hmm. So the process. Okay. Um, small necessities league if act. Um, I didn't do anything, and then sick leave. I changed uh, Cheryl to Will, uh, the board of selectmen to the town administrator, and then I had the question about what about the probationary period. I don't know if in my head. Okay, so <clears throat> notification of absence due to illness must be made to the department head at least one hour prior to regular scheduled start time. That's uh, on the day of the absence. And w what about if you're in your six month probationary period? What, how does that, does that work differently? I think it was just a question for me to all of you. And then each regular full-time employee will be allowed 13 days is removed. What does that mean? Sick leave per fiscal year accrued at a rate of two days at the end of July and one day at the end, it just goes into. But I didn't know what the 13, 13 days, what does that mean? Instead of saying, that a regular full-time employee will receive 13 days sick day. All right, it's accrued. So you get two in July and one for every other month. Okay? Oh, so does that just one not even month. have to be there, you mean? That's so 13 days removed should not even be Oh, there. should have been removed. Oh, should have been be removed. Ducky. Okay. I was confused, okay. I think it's important for the, this, this uh, paragraph to have a statement that sick leave is for those who are sick. It is not the equivalent of personal leave or vacation leave that I can take whether or not I'm ill. I once had an apartment at the time I asked by an employee. Okay. I was told that uh, at 4 o'clock that afternoon he had notified the department head he's going to be sick tomorrow. <laughs> that, you know, that seemed to fly in the face Okay, sick leave so when you're sick is not to be taken as time off. That's not true. Okay. Uh, sick leave bank. Um, I thought that that was correct based on what I read. Withdrawals from sick leave bank will be made at the 
sole discretion of the Board of Selectmen. Should that be town administrator, they must be requested in writing and they will be immediately applied to the sick leave balance of a named employee who has exhausted their personal. Remember that that was, does that sound correct what I fixed? Or I, I think it should go through town administrator okay. now that we have one. Okay, so I'll fix that, okay. Can I backtrack just quickly? Yep, sorry. How do we feel about removing that um, from the sick leave? Injury, illness, or disability self-imposed or resulting from recreational use of drugs or alcohol will not be considered a proper Oh, just take it off. Yep. This section. I mean, if you like, you're inviting suicide that. or something and then say, oh, it's not sick time while you're in the hospital. I think oh, that you know what I mean not right. that. Yeah. Okay. I, I think the, the portion that. that they're looking at more is recreational use of drugs and alcohol, but it does say any injury, illness, or disability self-imposed. Well, in going with the statement that what you said about uh, sick leave is generally, is generally for protection of employees against loss of pay due to personnel, however, sick leave may be used by an employee for illness of a child, spouse, up to 24 hours per year. Yeah, that no still stays, that. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, just want to make sure. Uh, all regular full-time and part-time will earn vacation time. All right, so are we taking out the injury illness? I'm sorry, Julie? I would like to. Okay. Injury illness or I crossed it out if everybody okay. else is okay right. with that. Yeah. I, okay, <laughs> I'll remove that. Um, I mean, certainly for, for a member of the family, using a sick day. It's legitimate, it's established now, but what I'm talking about is an employee yeah. saying, I'm gonna take a sick day tomorrow. Okay, and I, yeah, I'll, be, I'll be specific. Yep. Um, didn't really do too much with um, vacation. I was more asking, um, request to utilize vacation leave, which is on the neck, under like how much you get um, based on your years of service. Department, uh, notwithstanding any provisions other than these policies, a department head's denial of an employee's request to utilize vacation leave may be, uh, that just need to be separately appealed to the Board of Selectmen with the Board's decision on the matter being final. And is, is that accurate? Is that not really, is that the process we have? I don't, should that be the town administrator then us? Administrator like a regular? I want to have a final appeal okay, to the Board so of Selectmen. Okay, so that's, okay, so fine. Just one. The middle step needs to be there. And then to okay. the spirit of the new bylaw. Yep. And I think the accrual of vacation becomes difficult depending on when a per, an employee is hired. Because of our fiscal year ending June 30th, and if a person is hired in June, when it comes time, when they've earned vacation, and they can't use it because they were hired June 24th, and there, is, there just is no way for them to take their vacation by the end of the fiscal year. I don't know how to solve the problem. I just know that it's come up in other issues is that over the years. Is that addressed in here or no? No, it's, it's on their anniversary date. Like Where, if you look at, sorry. That's where the problem lies. In my right. opinion, it should be changed to the fiscal. So you, you begin earning vacation in the fiscal year. So change. You've got to figure out if you're hired you know, in the middle of the fiscal year, you've got to figure out what you're going to do with that first fiscal year. But after your, you know, once you start the new fiscal year is when we should start <coughs> rather than just on your anniversary. Right, something yeah. like what we did with sick, day, sick days. Instead of saying how you're going to get your 13 days, or you got them right up, mm -hmm. you accrue them over time. You get yeah. two in July and then one every month. So I think there's a way to handle this. Okay, so but the way this is worded right now has created It doesn't work right. Okay. No. Yeah, not only is it so confusing for the... But the how they address that is so much per week or so much per, per month, an hourly basis, so that somebody, say, an exa example, they just get hired in the middle of the year mm -hmm. and they've been on for three months and they need to take, take a vacation day or something. They've earned so many hours of vacation after three months because they... Getting yeah, I have to look basis. back at the probationary period, and I'll have to. And the other issue yeah, that is, is the funding and budgeting of it, because when you do it on an anniversary, you're now perhaps in the middle of the fiscal year or a quarter of the way through the fiscal year, and you now become eligible for more. Have you budgeted enough to cover that vacation? Or if you do it based on the fiscal year, you're now budgeting for that occurrence in that fiscal year. So it simplifies the budgeting, well, it eliminates confusion for the employees. Taking time. That's already... Well, 
for instance, like police, because they have to backfill sick leave. So if something, oh, okay, okay. So I'm just if, yeah. So if someone takes a week off, that yep. means someone else has to. Take, yeah. to, have to someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Because of the purpose of vacation is rest and relaxation, no additional salary will be paid to an employee in lieu of vacation time without the approval of the Board of Selectmen. So I'm just going to change that to town administrator and, okay. Um, holidays, uh, probationary period. I, I must have written myself a question and I don't remember if I... I'll have to go back to what it you I do include you do get holidays but to, not okay yeah um so we don't really have to address that then i think i was making a note to myself um, well there are some days but it's been tradition in the town for the um half day prior to new year's and christmas and the day after thanksgiving those are not legal holidays but i was going to suggest some change in terminology there for Washington's for birthday ought to be President's Day. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, been a while. Also, July 4th ought to be Independence Day. Okay, I didn't look at those. Um, Where, oh, Independence. It goes chronologically by yeah. year. And put them in chronological, okay. Well, that's day, day after Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right. That's, that's usually not a national holiday, but. Not a national holiday. <laughs> But is that, okay, wait, okay, now we're talking about two different things. So are these paid holidays, day after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving? Yeah. Those are, these are all correct though, right? Right. 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 Mm -hmm. This okay. is what we do right So, in uh, yeah. and you want me, did you want me to change some other kind of wording or no, just fix the presidents and the Independence, Independence Day? Okay. Um, my question there in Massachusetts, holidays falling on a Sunday are celebrated on a Monday, and holidays falling on a Saturday are celebrated on a Friday, but we're closed on a Friday. So what's, oh. what happens right now is what I'm kind of asking. What does happen? How does that work? Have to be it's typically Too bad? worked out uh, in contract negotiations, at least with the unions. I know one instance where they made a deal for a benefit, and then they said we'll give up if, if the holiday falls the legal holiday falls on the Saturday, we'll give up the Friday. So I don't know that there's a standard. Well, there probably should be. I don't think we, I mean, what, sh I mean, it, it was what a, should happen, it was I guess? Because we're closed yeah. all the time on Friday. So yeah, what, what, ex what is happening now? Like just people are getting an extra day? Or I mean, what happens? <laughs> How's it go? We end up having the board vote on it. When I, I do it the holidays, I can't remember exactly how we did it with the Fridays. Well, we I'm bring it to the board and you all vote on it. No, we get, for the Friday after Thanksgiving, That's a floating we, get an extra. we get a floating holiday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I prefer to spell that out. I mean, I think that for, so we should say for a holiday that falls on a Friday, we will, you, it will be X. So, right? Wouldn't that be a better thing to do? We should remove the Saturday. Uh, see, no, you can't, because right. that's standard. Well, because we don't know if we're always going to be closed on Fridays, yeah. though, so we don't really want to say. Or it, should we make them both just be the Monday? So it's always the Monday that they're going to get. Uh, okay, make both mm. be one. We used to use it like the no. floating holiday had to be used within 30 days. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez, that's not even spelled. Well, let me see. Yeah, another issue oh, that yeah. I think we ought to maybe <laughs> I, I just think consider this is a little longer. I think the fiscal year is a good substitute for anniversary. But what will sometimes happen, let's say I have five weeks, rather than retiring on July 30th, I'm going to retire, or June 30th, I'm going to retire on July 1 because I accumulate five weeks. Mm -hmm. And so oh. we ought to try and think about this oh, so great. that that's discouraged. Right. And, and I, you know, not everybody will do it, and there's a lot of responsible people who will exploit that. But I've known other communities where it has happened, and I think we should probably try and not encourage that, not allow that but to if happen. You, if you say you're eligible for five weeks because you've been here so long, yes. but you still have to accrue that, you can't take five weeks on July 1. Right. And you can take five weeks I think you're right. Yeah. There might be some kind of a cool process as opposed to getting it all at once on the 5th yeah. of July. I mean, I understand. 
what Will said as well, because that's how it's always been any place that I've worked where literally every paycheck, you know, your list on there was your amount of sick time and vacation times that goes up. My question would be, I mean, I know that we send that out, so maybe that would not be an added complication to do, but really how would that be too complicated, basically? Would we create a headache for ourselves if we actually did a completely pro rate of paycheck by paycheck a vacation time? We've actually had a conversation about putting that information both on the paper mm -hmm. as well as switching over to an online system where the employee can go to an online location, plug in a password, and see uh, how much personal time they have, how much vacation time, and the rest. And the reason that discussion came up is that there has been um, inadequate controls in the tracking of use of time off. So I think there's an area there where we need to do some more work. This whole section so. really needs to be um, looked at. This whole, okay. Okay, well, let me um, do some digging on that. Um, uh, I didn't have any questions except under bereavement leave. Uh, I had to read this a couple of times. Uh, stepchild residing with the employee. That really seemed unfair to me because people are separated. And I don't think we should be saying no, that you can't go to your stepchild's or someone else's person. You know, I, I understand why it's all separated that way, but using the word residing, I, I think is inappropriate <coughs> um, and unfair. So I would like to, what would happen if we cross that off? Could we just, you know, can you think of something else that'd be like, oh, well, I don't live with that person, but I want to go to blah. I mean, it's bereavement leave. I don't think people are going to, I don't know that people would abuse that, but, you know, again, I mean, if you're divorced, you're still going to go to your child's, um, you know, funeral. Right, or grandparent might be living with you or whatever. So yeah, do you have an objection to crossing off the word residing? Yeah, definitely get rid of it. Okay, I'll get rid of that. Um, uh, yes, so is there something else you saw? Well, just under insurance, yep. do we have to pay 75%? I'm not saying that we should not pay 75%. We don't have to. No, that's, a, that's a matter for negotiation in that's the contract. Right. So should we not say that because, I mean, here it says the town will pay 75% of the chosen health plan. Yeah, I don't think it's a choice. We, we can't change the In order yeah, to change can. that, it would have to be a negotiation with right. the bargaining group. I didn't really uh, touch uh, that because we haven't like, done any. I'm saying to, I'm saying to not have it say 75%, to just not have, say, have that say anything at all. Right. The percentage shouldn't be there. It should yeah. just be that the town will pay a portion. Well, of portion. Well, that's a good, I, I agree with that because some towns decide as part of the negotiations to look at that split, the premium split. Right. Mostly it's those towns that did 90-10 and, and saw that that was too rich. And so I'll just put a portion. Bargain it down to something lower. Right. And they would exchange that for some other benefit. So. I'm kind of hoping that once we can um, get through this, <laughs> we don't wait so long to do it again. And that, like, on Six a months. Jeez, now I'm saying like laws change, right? And to just kind of give it a you know cursory review, um, you know, annually, like just kind of have that on a calendar to say, oh, what might have changed this year? What did we vote into a bylaw? What did we, you know, just to try to keep up with it um, more because it is a lot to go through, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, can we just look at pay quickly? Where it says that membership is optional for elected officials. I mean, it's really not, unless you meet oh, the requirements. I hadn't here. even noticed that. that. Oh, oh, retirement, it says membership. It's not in, optional. Um, Mr. Kemp's retirement system is optional for I'll elected officials, right. but it's not really. It's, I mean, if, if you make, what, five, more than $5,000 a year as an elected official, it's 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 actually it's requirements. Yeah. That's absolutely no. Yeah. Okay, I'll pick that up. Uh, Training and educational assistance, I uh, changed that from the Board of Selectmen to the Town Administrator or appointing authority. And my question was, does appointing authority need to be there? Um, you know, does that, does that whole thing, you know, need to be there at all? It's, um, the Town considers employee develop, 
meant an integral part of each department head's responsibility. The objective of this policy is to provide each employee with long-term personal growth and the town with qualified and promotable individuals. Department heads may request approval of the BOS or appointing authority. Should that be worded a little bit? Differently, or just approval of the town administrator, or to enroll employees in outside seminars. I, I mean, should that just be up to the department head? To I mean, uh, I so I'm gotta, just asking. That's got to either be go yeah. directly. This gets very controversial. In New England, the political culture is traveling to meetings outside your area always gets controversial. And okay. So I think that ought to be a public process. Um, I also think that it's important for department heads to have some periodic refresher and training so that they're not inventing the wheel and they get to see what other communities are doing. But, you know, uh, it's one of those, I would say that um, have it cleared by the town administrator and report it to the board of select. And then to, to do the, and then to the, okay. And then um, um, down to funding. Right. I'm sorry, Jimmy? Subject, subject to funding. Subject to funding. It's funny. It's funny. Um, down the bottom, the town may require the employee to sign an agreement to remain with the town for a period of two years after the completion of the course or else be willing to reimburse the town for the funds. May, may, uh, if we do that for one, should we do that for all? I think that opens us up. What do you all think about that? Uh, should we, that be in there? Yes, should it? Language is typically for uh, if, if we were to reimburse somebody for getting a degree, typically you would um, ask for that. Well, oh, this yeah. whole thing, full-time employees and regular part-time working at least 20 hours a week who have worked for the town at least one year are eligible for reimbursement for tuition, registration, books, work-related courses which serve to improve their knowledge and skills, increase their performance. Approval of the particular course must be requested prior to enrollment in order to be eligible for reimbursement and in order to qualify must have the recommendation of the department head and the approval of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, to qualify, I'm sorry, I skipped right over the town administrator there, I don't know why. To qualify for reimbursement, employees must receive a grade of C or higher, or in the case of a pass-fail, must pass. And then the town, it goes, so does that all sound correct, not correct, what, based on what you're saying? Well, I mean, and then it says that we, ha have to, we should require that they remain with the town for two years or they pay us back. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not, are you saying? I'm not saying that. Well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Are you saying that you do it for, if somebody takes a course, one course, that they're obligated to stay for two years? I guess so. Or we, right. That's, that's kind of, I'm like, if we do this for one, should we do this for everybody? I, I don't quite, I didn't quite maybe get the whole thing, so. And I don't know if necessarily the best way to go about that is to say the town may require an employee to sign an agreement to remain with the town. It may just say that if the employee leaves the employee of the town, you know, within a year, maybe two years successive of being reimbursed, that they have to return that reimbursement. Because then it doesn't come across quite, this almost sounds like an employment contract. Right. That you're saying that, you know, you won't remain in town for two years. <coughs> well, I think even using the word may is like, oh, okay, so I'll do it for you, but I'm not going to do it for John. Right. I mean, really? No. So, so it does say in here, work related <laughs> courses. So yep. it's not like it's going to be somebody who's trying to finish a degree. You know, that they're uh, could be if it could be if it re applied to their job. It says work related courses which serve to improve their knowledge uh, and skills and increase their performance with the town. No, so which is courses? Are we talking about <laughs> college courses? I don't know. Are we talking about the <laughs> I think treasurer collect the school uh, every summer. I don't know. Maps, it doesn't specify. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, is this in the contracts? Because what about the police that we train? They are required to stay. I didn't know what this referred to, so yeah. that's why I'm asking. Yeah. Where does this two-year rule come yeah. from? This Where is, does, is this whole thing appropriate or not appropriate? This is not a union contract. No. Yeah. This okay, does so not imply a contract in any way, shape, or form, so what is if you read the preamble. So, so, so they have what do do with in their contract separate from this. It looks like this was an attempt to mirror what was in a contract. Mm -hmm. Should this be in here at all? Yeah, I think not. I mean, we're not really 
doing tuition reimbursement. That's kind of what this right. is related right. to. Right. You know, but we don't really have work. the funding for it. Right. I'd, I'd rather put the money into paying people an appropriate salary for their job mm -hmm. than trying to figure out reimbursements and how long they're going to stay after they get a C or better. Mm -hmm. So uh, can the whole of M be gone? Can the whole of M be gone? Like the town considers employee development an integral part of each department? I mean, does well, that even have to be there? Well, I don't think that we should have the option for if we want to send someone to a course to be able to do it. I think just that last set sentence about the town may require an employee to sign an agreement, everything after that, I mean, in my personal opinion, that should go. But I think that we still do want to have... Leave all of us? Right, so if there is a, a reason and a time where it's appropriate <coughs> for... And it may, even if we continue to remain financially strapped, there may be something like John said, if we're talking about like the treasurer, you know, course that that someone goes to, or even something that's being held at Mount Wachusett, you know, some special board of health agent, you know, that we may want to send yeah. someone to to you know and have that option when it's appropriate. But yeah, I'm like, Lily, do you have to go to to be certified? Do you have to go for course? Yeah, we have courses every August. We have to. Well, we should be going to school. Okay, so we shouldn't take it out, but we should take out the last sentence. For me, that's my opinion. Right, so, but is there a cost for that school? Yeah. And if there is, do you pay it out of your expense budget, or do you pay it yourself? It comes out of our budget. Right, see, so it's a budgeted expense. Right. So we're not going to be doing reimbursement for that. No. Right. But I think the point is that we want people to do these things. Right. 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 So, can you hear all right, uh, so we're keeping that, but we're losing the last few lines. <laughs> yeah. Is that what we're doing? Already good. I will remove those. Okay. In connection with that, yeah. if the tech ever restores uh, travel funds, one thing we control that some communities use I, is that if you allow a manager to go to an annual conference, let's say out of state, they just don't go to the conference and come back. They come back and give a written report to the board of selectors right. yeah. so that you have some assurance that they just didn't go and play golf all the time. Now, I'm saying that because I happen to know one of the conferences that I go to that there are some, not in Massachusetts, of course, who do that, who do that. They waste taxpayers' dollars and they goof off and don't attend the sessions. If you have to give a report uh, it's hard to do that. It's much harder to do it. And I think that makes sense, and it, it's a way to exercise some control when you allow someone to travel to the state at taxpayers' expense. I don't even see a section for travel. So I'm just saying, so we know that's not in here, but I'm not Yeah, I don't see any. Down the road. Okay. So I just made a note about that. And I would even necessarily say out of state. I mean, well, yeah, because like travel. Okay, okay, so I'm going to make it out of the state. You know, there for three days. Okay. Um, compensation policy. Uh, there will be job descriptions for each position of the town that describes duties and authority that will be reviewed annually. Is this even being done? No. Okay, thank you. A, uh, we. Okay, uh, we already know that we should be doing that. Um, and then the whole compensation, there will be a recommended rate of pay schedule for all town to go to the town administrator. I underlined the whole thing. And um, what is happening? What was, when was the last time that we had, I think we're working on a whole compensation structure, right? Um, and what will the procedure be going forward? Um, and I think this whole section was really, I wrote, take a look at each step for responsibility and to really, um, you know, was this personnel board, we don't have one, I can cross that out. You know, so it was really for us to say, okay, well, what is accurate? So I'll whittle this down um, a little bit more and cross out some things. And if you have some notes that you'd like to send me, that'd be great. Um, Just a question in general. When we're using here, we're changing like shall to will. So yeah. we're using will, which yeah. is an absolute. Okay. But we just say we're not doing that. So well, are we opening ourselves up for liability by using work, but then we're actually doing it? I think that we have been already opening ourselves up to shall, because it's like, well, I'm going to do it for Luann, but I'm not going to do it for Diane. We're already doing that. So I think that going forward, I think it should be a will. We are going to do this, and we are going to. So I think it's just from when we finish this, that this is the way 
I don't think that there can be maybes. There, there is a definite. We can't because that's worse. I really believed that that was worse when I, I was I definitely, I definitely like will, and I agree. Which yeah, be I think will. that we are not that doing things that we that should we're do. Not yeah. doing it. Right. And but I think that we have some better controls now. Where you know we've, we definitely have some better controls, and we just have to do them. You know. If we don't have the funding, and people don't have the time to do this stuff, and it's required to do it. They require to. And we are opening ourselves up. I think you're still opening yourself up by saying may. I might do it for you, but I might not do it for her. I think may is I think worse, worse because, way worse. Because then I think that, um, even if we want to put a little caveat in our preamble that says, please note the use of the word will um, is contingent upon you know, having appropriate funds and, and, and staff, staff to, to do it. <laughs> right. And it's, you know, it's just That's like, one thing. But right. To like, use the word right, may right, is yeah, not, yeah. and yeah. shall, maybe, you know, is not a good idea. So I'll I'll pull that down a little bit more. Um, compensatory time I didn't know. Uh, I I'll cross all that. Um, I'll get rid of that and just fix the um, overtime uh, part of it. I wasn't even sure about some like callback pay, emergency closing. I mean some of these I don't really. I change weekly to biweekly for pay. Um, Paychecks will not be given by the department head to anyone other than the person for whom they are written. Uh, paychecks will not be distributed prior to the date now or authorized by the treasurer unless for, I just change it to will and not may, because we shouldn't be doing, maybe I'll give it to Ken and maybe I'll give it to Doug. Um, repeal. Your paychecks, we now do direct deposit, so that shouldn't no, be an issue. I don't, oh no, some, you don't have to have to, oh no, you don't have to have direct deposit. And are we going between bi-weekly? I thought we were bi-weekly, were we not? Are we not, not, yet. not yet. We are not, oh, I'm Switch sorry. I, I don't keep track of when I come into. Switch to so, when are. Uh, frankly, okay. has to I don't come in every um, be implemented with changes in contracts. Okay, so just leave it at weekly. Sorry. Yeah. I, when I tried to I do that earlier. I don't think that was done. Uh, okay, so was, don't fix. that's the union representative to say that's a violation of Okay. It is. Do not fix so it. we have to change that before doing it. Okay, so just leave that alone for yeah. right now. Okay, another reason for looking at it on an annual basis and fixing it. Um, can uh, we go force direct deposit? I mean, can we say we're only going to do direct deposit? Under the law, you can force direct deposit. Oh. Uh, and I don't think they would have to be forced. The only caveat is under both Massachusetts law, if you require direct deposit, and the employee does not have a bank account, you have to set that up for them and pay any fees associated. Okay. I mean, some don't have a bank account. So a few. I'll try to address that in here, too. Um, I have some questions sure. yeah. sure. in what? The pay for temporary assignment. That is a really convoluted statement. For one thing, what is temporary? It's six months, is it a year? And the other thing is, if you're doing the job of a position that you've been put in temporarily, should you be getting the same pay that is that, that no. person doing it no. got? No. Why not? Well, really it's temporarily it's only temporary. Temporary. You don't have the qualifications. You don't have the qualifications or the skills. It's only customary to get a dollar. You're doing the same work. I know. But you are, but I mean, I did a deputy assessor's job.